Welcome back to Gloved Up Garage. In this episode, we're back to work on the Lincoln, and I've got the hood just about ready for paint. Well, the bottom side of the hood is now ready for paint. I went ahead and uh, vacuumed all the debris and everything off of it, wiped it down with some cleaner, and then taped off my information label, my emissions label, scuffed it with one of these red scuff pads everywhere I could reach, and then wiped it down with a couple of coats of wax and grease remover. From there, it's pretty much good. I'll wipe it down one more time before I spray it with the uh, white base coat to cut in the bottom side of the hood. And you can tell the middle of the hood doesn't really have any paint on it, just pretty much the outsides and then around the hinges like I showed in one of the last videos. They didn't really paint these things that well, so I'm not gonna concentrate on putting a whole lot of paint on it. I mainly just wanna cover up that beige uh, metallic base coat like right here down here, I wanna cover all that stuff up with the white and make it look as good as I possibly can. A lot of this won't be shown. The insulation goes back in, pretty much covers up the middle of the hood. So it doesn't have to be perfect. The right fender is up here on the stand. I've just worked on getting some of the trim and things off of it. The hood hinge was still bolted to it. So this uh, the outside trim here, it just pops off with a couple of clips and a couple of nuts. I'll work on getting that prepped when I do the rest of the outside of the car. For now, I just want to concentrate on the inner works so that when the frame is done, I can start bolting up these panels and getting everything put back together pretty quickly. So for now, I've got to clean all this grit and grime off of this thing. It's really dirty and nasty up in here, especially there's some areas where a lot of dirt splashes up behind the uh, wheel well liners and just kind of sets in the fender. So I've got to work on getting that cleaned up I'll go through and scuff this thing down and get it ready for paint as well. And then I'll just come back when I'm done with it. I just got done scuffing the inside of the fender and I wanna show you all what this should look like when you're prepping these parts, especially for like a cut in process. You don't have to get really, really detailed with this. It doesn't need to get very deep. You know, taking that red scuff pad and basically just rubbing it under my hand against the surface. There's a couple of spots here that are still a little bit shiny, but for the most part, this is about what I would expect it to look like. We're just trying to scuff that surface of this paint so that the new white base coat will adhere to it. It doesn't have to be perfect. The main thing is to keep it clean, which I've got a majority of the dust and the dirt and stuff that was trapped behind that fender well on the bottom side of the fender, it's, it's really clean. So, from here, I'll wipe this down with a couple of rags of wax and grease remover, and that'll pretty much be it for the right fender. I'll grab the left fender, get it cleaned up, and get it prepped too. My fenders and my hood, all the parts are ready to be cut in. Unfortunately, I just can't get any paint anytime soon. It uh, looks like the paint that I can get out here in this area is gonna be twice what I would normally pay if I was to go into Louisville. So I'll just have to wait till the next time I go into town and hit up my paint supplier there to get uh, the paint that I'm going to need, which to cut all this stuff in, I'm looking at about a pint of paint. So I'll just hold off and get that uh, the next time I'm in town. In the meantime, I'll start working on these headlights. And what I've done is I've taken off the molding that goes around the outside. If you look at this headlight here, there's this black molding. It just kind of pops off. The bottom one's double-sided taped on. It's just like a rubber seal. So I went ahead and popped all that off. I've got uh, my DA sander over here on top of the header panel and the core support. I've got it loaded up with 400 grit sandpaper and I'm hoping that we'll get some of these little cracks and stuff that you can see. There's like this pitting stuff that's in here. I mean, obviously it's hazed at the top, but I wanna get some of that pitting out see if I can get that out. If I can, hopefully these headlights will come back. If I can make them just look a little better than what they are now, that's the end goal of this. I've learned my lesson. If you watch the video about where I polish the headlights on the Marauder and I use that Duplicolor Clear, I will not be using that clear on this. I'm actually gonna use a 2K automotive clear that I'll have to mix up and spray through my spray gun. So I've learned my lesson. I'm not gonna use any cheap clear. I'm gonna use some really good stuff and hopefully get this thing looking a lot better than it does. Um, I'll work on the second one as soon as I get this polished, but. I'll go ahead and start polishing this with the, the uh, 400 grit to let you guys see what it looks like once it's ready for the 600 grit. And, uh, and then from there it would get clear coated. So hang in and I'll get this polished up. 
for the new subscribers that didn't see me polish the, the headlights on the Marauder and how that process works. So I've taken my DA sander and I've gone across this with 400. If you can see this line right here, this is the coating that's on the outside of the headlight on the plastic that actually starts to fade out like this and starts to get pitted from just debris and wind and driving. What you're left with once you get the coating off is the actual bare plastic. And this is the part that we're gonna work really hard to get smooth uh, before we put the clear coat on. So I've got this all polished out for the most part with 400. I need to get the rest of this coating off on the rest of the light. I'm probably gonna step down to 320 because 400 is taking me quite a bit of time. I've got about five minutes in this so far. Really, that's way too long. I don't wanna heat the plastic up too much. 320 is a, a much more abrasive grit of sandpaper, but it will take this stuff off without applying a lot of heat like 220 or 180 or something like that would, uh, creating even deeper scratches than what I want. So 320, I'm gonna step down to that. That's what you would normally prep for if you were doing uh, some body work where you're gonna apply some primer. From the 320, I'll go ahead and hit it again with the 400 that I'm using now. Of course, I'll use a fresh pad and that should buff out most of the scratches from the 320. 400 should be good for the clear. We're gonna do two pretty wet coats on this, which should fill in a lot of those scratches. I may go ahead and hit it with 600 after the 400, just to make sure I get a lot of those scratches out. Usually about 600 is where you would apply your base coat and your clear coat and stuff like that. So I'll definitely hit this again with uh, 400 once I'm done with 320 and then go back over this with 600 before the clear. So I'll come back once I'm done, but I just wanted to point this out to show you guys what I'm doing. It doesn't look much different from the previous clip, but this is after the 600 grit is done. This is where I would normally just go ahead and clear coat these if I had the materials and it was warm enough to do, which I don't have either one of those. It's about 50 degrees out here right now and I don't have the materials. So that will have to wait for another day. And a side-by-side -side view of where we started and where we're at. Of course, that's the driver's side right here. I've got to tear it down and work on it next. Now the passenger side's ready for clear coat. All right, both lights are polished now. So we've got our passenger side ready for clear. It's nice and smooth, nice and even. Driver's side, same thing, nice and smooth. The coating on this side took a little bit longer to come off than the other side for some reason. I'm not really sure. But they're both even, they're both ready for clear now, so we're good to go. Last thing I wanted to cover in this video, I got a package from my wife's grandmother, and it had some of the stuff you don't normally get when you get a used car. Uh, you know, sometimes you get an owner's manual tucked away in the glove compartment, other times dealers clean them out or whatever. In this case, we got everything. We got the window stickers. So the cool thing about this is it shows us what the standard features were, and then it shows the optional features, like this three-stage paint, was actually an option. And then our moonroof, which I knew that was an option, the license plate was included, and then the wheels were optional wheels. Grand total on this, $48,010. Now, I also received the original purchase paperwork, which is this right here. I can't show it, it's got sensitive information on it, but I can tell you, they got it for $38,000 out the door, which is a really good deal, 10 grand off, and they had about 38 miles on it when they bought it, so pretty cool. Some of the other stuff that comes tucked away in this uh, little, uh, like portfolio that the owner's manual comes in is you got your Blue's Clues safety advice. This shows you how to buckle in your kids, uh, your baby car seat and where the anchor points are and all that stuff. And then we also got our maintenance guide which tells you when all of the maintenance needs to be done, what mileage intervals, and uh, you can, there's spaces in there to write that information down when you take it to the dealer. You got your warranty guide, just tells you what's covered in the bumper to bumper, the powertrain warranty and all that stuff. Your benefits of owning, which essentially this is just Lincoln's 24 hour roadside assistance. It talks about some of the maintenance that's covered. And then your quick reference guide, this shows you where the important things are like your turn signal switch, headlight switch, how to turn things on and off in the car, just kind of be able to hop in and drive the vehicle. And it shows some of the optional stuff too. Something that definitely period dates this vehicle. So this right here is a CD and I was looking at the directions on this. You actually pop this into a Windows based PC and it's an interactive guide that tells you things about this town card. And I'll have to go in and see if I've got a computer that still has 
uh, CD-ROM drive hooked up to it. And I'll have to check this out. I'm sure it's going to be pretty cool. We got your owner's manual. This has absolutely everything you'd ever need to know, front to back, all your options, how to uh, how to find fuses and things like that. We've I've actually used this to track down fuses and relays in the car. Cool thing, it lists an optional navigation system that was available, so I need to research that. I want to check that out. If it's like a plug and play unit, I might try to track one of those down and uh, put that in this vehicle. And then the last thing, uh, last couple things I got here, I got the valet key. Now on um, the Grand Marquis, some of the Crown Vicks, the Lincoln Town Cars, the Broader, the valet key will allow you to open the driver's door and unlock it. It will allow you to start the vehicle, but it will not allow you to access the glove compartment or the trunk. So on the driver's door, the Marauder and the, the Town Car, there's you know the button you can push to pop the trunk. That button is lockable with a normal key, but you cannot unlock it with the valet key. I got an extra key and an extra key fob. These tags are normally attached to the keys and they allow the dealer to cut the key and then program it to the car. It has a specific code on it that I don't wanna show, so got those flipped over. This came in the package too. Looks like it's a lug wrench and then something to pop off the, um, the little hubcaps. So pretty cool to get all this stuff with the car that you don't normally get. That'll be it for this episode of Gloved Up Garage. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Stay gloved up.